Oh, please. I don't really want to touch anything. I knock everything over all the time. Don't even worry about it. Don't even trip. I'm a toy designer, so if anything breaks, I can fix it. It's all good. You know, my dad actually caught me when I was little with the Bill and Ted action figures. I was like ripping them apart. And he's like, oh, I just bought those for you. What are you doing? Little did he know I was going to make a career out of it, you know? It was market research the whole time. Hi, everybody. I'm Jack Rossi, and this is my collection. This is sort of the 80s bin. You know, it's, it's a lot of little tchotchke things where I don't really know where they go. So they just kind of end up here. This is a big mishmash of, I don't know <laughs> what's going on, but this is definitely sort of your 80s monsters. This is your uh, Star Wars geek fest. Down there, you got your paranormal investigator Ghostbusters and then kind of weird mishmash of other stuff and giant robots and turtles. You know, another thing, just to go off on another rant, because it doesn't have any rhyme or reason, is Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget was so cool, man. They actually made the car. And it's a really good example of, of uh, transformation in vehicles. And it's something that all the toy companies are trying to crack right now. So right when you first get it out of the box here, it's in the van mode. But the crazy thing is what you do is you take this whole back off and you flip it upside down. And that's the back of the police vehicle. And you pull the front out you reconfigure the front of the car. It's not really that sophisticated, but it is a lot of parts. And I can see why they didn't make too many of them, which is why it's sort of raresville. Six years, I designed the uh, Burger King action figures. You know, all the freebie little premium toys. Uh, premium sounds like a really expensive word, but it's not. It's the free toy that you get. And, uh, you know, the safety restrictions are really stringent because they age grade the zero. Um, you're giving away the toy for free, so it's really cheap. And we had to work with some really good sculptors because if you only have 37 cents to design a toy, you want the sculpt to be perfect and you want the paint job to be good. So uh, right up here on the top shelf, I have my Simpsons collection. Well, this one here first, this is the Funzo doll from Kid Robot. This was one of the rare chases. The, they had two of them. This was the one chase. And then the other one that you didn't really know what it was was Bumblebee Man. So they kind of fetch a good penny, but I like the Funzo because it's such a random, obscure reference to the show. Another obscure reference is Homer and the Moo Moo. And these are sort of like these squishy vinyl figures that you can't really find anywhere. Um, of course, you'll find them on eBay, but they're going to be in Greece and they're going to be $10,000. I have the first Radioactive Man comic book. And the cool thing about that is it has this bone structure printed and glow in the dark on the front. I was really in the Kid Robot when it first launched. Unfortunately, they closed down all their shops and they put everything into third-party retailers. But Frank Kozik was always funny. He's responsible for the Labbit. The Labbit's cool because you're like, well, it's a rabbit. Why is it a Labbit? What he did was, well, he sent the specs off to Japan to get them to made up, you know? And uh, when he sent it off, it came back as smorking Labbit because of the language barrier, as opposed to smoking rabbit. The other one here that's really good, this is before the Labbit went to Kid Robot. This is one of the first ones, a little bit dusty. And the gimmick with this one from uh, Medicom Toys Corporation is that he has the skeleton inside. This one's the second rarest, which should has the red one, but then there's like a gray one, which is like really hard to find. You're kind of a chumpy if you don't have this in your uh, toy collection. This was the uh, Back to the Future Blu-ray set that came from the UK. So they put a lot of detail into this set. This is like the photo where Marty and his sister like, disappear, the newspaper clipping. They did a little replica sports almanac. And I'm like, that's cool. Like I've seen those on eBay, but you really haven't because these have like the actual stats, like NBA scoring leaders for that year. This is the USA Today article. Marty McFly Jr. arrested for theft. What? No, say it ain't so. so. This is like right before they changed time, you know? I have a pair of the uh, DMC DeLorean Nikes that came out. These were a Black Friday release a few years ago. Best part is the bottom looks like the taillights of the DeLorean. And of course it has the steel finish on the side. They're really cool shoes. I don't really collect Nike shoes for myself. And people don't even really know what that means. And uh, well, I'll just show you. I kind of got into trying to find used Nike baby shoes for my large cell Ninja Turtles. The requirement for getting a shoe is it has to have the colorway of the turtle, obviously, but they also have to be used. So it looks like they were kind of like kicking around and doing ninja stuff in alleyways and, you know, beating up Foot Clan. 
this area here, this is my workstation. This is where I do all my drawings. I've got a light table down here. But I try to keep you know, a healthy collection of toys and books and comic books for reference whenever I'm working on different projects. Right here I have a, you know old Coca-Cola bottle, kind of crate filled with my entire run of Usagi Ojimbo. This is the uh, first issue from Fanographic Books. Absolutely love it. If you dip back here to number 10, you get the appearance of the Ninja Turtles. You get Leonardo kind of interacting with Usagi Ojimbo. And this is the uh, number one Usagi Ojimbo color special, and I got him to kind of sign the, the top there. Actually, right over here, I have an original Usagi Ojimbo uh, drawing. You know, everybody's really excited about Ghostbusters because it's a big anniversary, and they're finally going to do Ghostbusters 3. They've been trying to make number three for decades, and I have the Ghostbusters 3 script from 1999. This is the first draft. This is penned by Dan Aykroyd. So right here on the spine, you can see Ghostbusters 3. This is Ghostbusters Hellbent, they were calling it, or Ghostbusters Go to Hell. So this is like a shooting script, like, you know, first draft, you can make the movie out of this. But more importantly, I have a proton pack. And I started building this thing for Nintendo Wii. And what I did was I rigged out this with a, uh, a Wiimote and I had the ghost trap with the nunchuck that you threw the ghost trap out with, and I made like a full white proton pack, and later I turned it into a hero pack from the movie. But that's it, that's the proton pack. This is the best though, this is what you wanna see. I keep this down here, because I really don't know what to do with it. I'd like to get a better case for it, and some of those my light type of uh, things for it, but this is my original set of Garbage Bell Kids that I collected with my dad. Uh, growing up in Philadelphia. Fortunately, I don't have A and B of everything, but I do have one of each artwork card. Most famous is Adam Baum. He's number eight. And everybody tries to look for that one. And then I think the last page, if memory serves, two weird ones that I found when I was collecting them. Because you'd always have Garbage Pail Kids, red. Or you'd have Garbage Pail Kids, blue. But this, for some reason, has a mix of them. These are Garbage Pail Kids, purple. I don't know any information on them other than I've never seen those fonts in purple before, but I found two of them. They're from the same series, and they're one card a piece from each other. So this is uh, 260, and this is 261. So something happened in the printing press around there, because these cards appear later in both red and blue. This ain't filth. You know, this is, this is a collection. This is a time capsule. People call me a hoarder, but I'm like, no, I'm a collector. You know, I'm, I'm a preserver of time. I'm a time lord, damn it. This is, this is a really good pop culture kind of time capsule that I try to preserve and to present to other people, show it for future generations, because there's not a lot of people that have a wealth of knowledge about this stuff, and of course, I geek out over it because I am a toy designer. So that's my collection in a nutshell. This is uh, all the collectibles that I have. You know, I try to keep all of my reference close to me and everything that inspires me on a daily basis as a toy designer in Southern California. You know, the whole industry's out here and you always have to kind of stick to your guns and keep up with the trends. And to bring back old things that are new again is always a bonus in this industry. You know, anything 80s, anything ooze, a lot of rock from the 70s, like that's who I am and, and that's what I like to collect. And I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you again soon.